Um, I also want to um, uh, say one word about uh, why I'm particularly excited to have Professor Sachs here uh, at the beginning of a new school year to speak to us. Um, and maybe the fact that it's uh, today, September 11th, seven years after uh, the, the, the uh, infamous attack, um, also figures in a bit here. But I just think this is a great moment for Harvard Law School and Harvard Law students to be thinking about the kinds of things that Professor Sachs writes about. Many students come to Harvard Law School with, uh, with issues or concerns or problems or injustices that they, that they care about and that they want to address. Uh, and they come to law school hopeful that this, this is a place where they will manage to do such a thing. They will find out the tricks uh, and learn sort of how law and policy relates to these very significant problems. Um, too many times when students get to law school, they find, uh, in fact, that uh, those questions aren't being asked, that it's not about problems or issues. Uh, it's about procedures. It's about jurisdictions. It's about uh, reasons and arguments. Uh, and somehow, those problems sort of fall through the cracks and aren't, uh, and aren't asked anymore. Uh, part of why I think it's so wonderful to have Professor Sachs is not just the brilliance and energy he brings to big problems, the planet's biggest, arguably, um, but also just that he asks those questions and asks them in a way that is creative and reminds us, I hope, that these are questions that we should be asking as well and with a different mindset and some creativity uh, and some leadership from the likes of Professor Sachs, maybe we can actually begin to solve these problems. So with that, I will just turn it over to Jay who will uh, do the proper introduction. Thanks. And thanks for coming. Good morning. Thank you, Professor Hansen. We're very fortunate to have Jeffrey Sachs join us this morning. Professor Sachs not only works on the most important issues of global economic development, his ideas carry tremendous weight. Professor Sachs has advised foreign governments, the World Health Organization, and the IMF. He was twice named one of Time Magazine's 100 most important people in the world, excuse me, 100 most influential people in the world, and has been referred to by the New York Times as, quote, probably the most important economist in the world. In his best-selling books, The End of Poverty and Commonwealth, both of which are available for purchase at the Coop, Professor Sachs challenges, <laughs> surprised, <No>. surprised. <laughs> Professor, Sachs, Professor Sachs challenges wealthy nations to rethink their basic assumptions about global health, extreme poverty, and environmental sustainability. The problems of global development are complex, interconnected, a moral challenge, and a threat to our own security. But in spite of all these difficulties, Professor Sachs argues that we can and must solve these problems. Professor Sachs is currently the director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University, the president of the Millennium Promise Alliance, and special advisor to the UN Secretary General. In these roles, he develops and advances policies for a more just and secure world. As a writer, advocate, and teacher, Professor Sachs reminds us that today's challenges are global, we are linked to the world's voiceless by our values and our interests. Professor Sachs, welcome back to Harvard. We look forward to hearing your thoughts. Good morning, everybody. What a pleasure to be here. And this is actually a room I know well, because I taught uh, classes here for many years with uh, Roberto Unger, who you know is uh, now a minister in, um, in the government of Brazil and working on problems of sustainable development. So good things happen in this classroom, and I expect uh, many of you to go out and be leaders uh, in the future, and it's especially uh, a privilege to speak to you at the beginning of your law school experience. My main message to you is whatever they might do in, in teaching you in the next three years, uh, don't let anybody beat out of you the enthusiasm for seeing law as an instrument of social change and as a mechanism for solving human problems. And that, I think, is the most important role that we need to play in the coming years. And I believe, as I'll emphasize, that places like Harvard have unique responsibilities that are not being fulfilled right now and uh, that 
because of that are putting us at uh, unnecessary risk. Or to put it another way, Wasilla is just beating the stuffing out of Cambridge right now. Uh, and uh, we got to get our act together and speak out and start working and doing what we believe to be possible, which is the reason why we're here. And that is the idea of applying intellect and learning and science and knowledge and history to human betterment. And we're facing a massive reaction in this country that says none of that's possible, that none of you care, that we're all a bunch of elitists uh, out to denigrate the rest of the country and the rest of the world. It's a bunch of crap if I can use a technical term. But we better get our voices together and we better start acting on our beliefs and we better start communicating better than we are. And the reason is this world's in a lot of trouble. Despite and ironically in part because of our wealth and technical capacity, the world is not reliably running on the rails uh, or even running in the fiber optic uh, cables right now. The world is at an unusually high risk of spinning out of control. And I think it's our greatest challenge to try to help ensure that that doesn't happen. And it will require special kinds of action and knowledge and commitment, kind of mix of knowledge and the work that you're going to learn and the skills that you're going to develop in the next three years, combined with an ethical commitment, which won't come from your classes necessarily. You're going to have to find it yourselves and in other ways, although I'm sure your teachers can help to impart it if they're doing their job properly. But it's going to have to come also through a lot of reflection internally about what you want to do and how you want to use the skills that you're developing. My job is to worry you today. If I weren't worried, I would not be doing what I'm doing. Uh, there are plenty of uh, other things uh, that I'd like to do more uh, if I felt uh, that it was really possible. But I feel a little bit compelled to do what I'm doing right now, which is trying to understand these challenges of poverty or environmental degradation or profound interethnic and interreligious conflict or a geopolitics that's gone crazily awry, or a country like ours, which is seemingly absolutely incapable of serious discussion right now. <laughs>